And with me is Mr. David Navarro, who is the member of the SON Scaling of Nutrition Lead Group and Professor of Global Health in Imperial College London and also winner of the most coveted World Food Prize. Um, there is another commonality between David and me because he is the first recipient of the Global Nutrition Le Leadership Award and I am the seventh recipient. Uh -huh. so, Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And uh, it has been a great privilege to be with you in Kathmandu yes. in the SON Global Gathering yes. and also today in Food System Dialogue. And uh, I am very happy and I think India is very happy to hear from you uh, with your prolific background and experience. Um, I think uh, country will benefit. Thank you so much for agreeing for this interview. Um, David, uh, can you tell me uh, why nutrition is important because you have been working on nutrition and food security agenda for decades. Um, you, have, you have traveled all over the world. You also worked uh, in India and you were telling that you also worked in my state in Odisha in yes. many districts which is uh, affected by left wing extremist tribal. Uh, so can you tell why nutrition is important? Thank you very much indeed. Basanji, I started working on uh, issues here in the subcontinent of Southeast Asia Very good. Uh, in 1990, 1978. That's a lot, lot of years ago. Yeah. My operations at that time involved me being a child health doctor working in East Nepal and then uh, also having responsibilities in Southeast Asia. So actually in the early 1980s I was involved in some child health and nutrition work in Orissa, oh, which good. was me being based in Jagatsingpur near Katak no. and then also traveling to different districts including Fulbani, uh, Kalahandi and Koraput as it used to be called. And do you know what I discovered Right. is that so many of the children that I would see in uh, clinics or in health posts were ill because they were experiencing diseases but they were also often undernourished and even at that stage I knew that an undernourished child was more likely to experience severe consequences of an illness compared with a well-nourished child. I also saw how malnutrition in early years could have a really bad impact on the long-term growth of a child, particularly leading to stunted growth, uh, especially if the malnutrition occurred very young, that stunting was sometimes quite hard to overcome with subsequent treatment leading to long-term shortness of growth and that didn't just lead to being short, but it also meant that organs in the body weren't fully formed and that had implications for the development of the adolescent and then, and then the adult. So I thought to myself, if I really want to make a difference to the well-being of children around the world, I must get involved in nutrition. And that's why I started to focus on nutrition and over the years I looked for ways to increase emphasis on nutrition. Uh, I worked for the British government, the United Nations and others and now that's why you and I are bonded by our own joint interest yeah. in the relationship between illness and nutritional status uh, and that's why you have just been awarded this award because of your role in raising the profile of nutrition in India and I'm very pleased to be working with you given that I've been so concerned about malnutrition among children in this region really since I started out in medicine some years ago. Oh, very good. Good to know about your passion, how you could make your passion as a profession. Yeah. I'm very happy that there is another commonality. I also belong to uh, Odisha, as yeah. I told, and also part of undivided uh, Kotak and Jagasimpur is oh, part of right, that. Right. Uh, so how my my motherland could influence your thinking and action, I am very impressed. Um, David, you also worked 
on sustainable development goal agenda. Yes. Uh, you were uh, a special rapporteur to UN Secretary General. Yes. Um, can you tell how nutrition can be center of the development agenda? Absolutely. These sustainable development goals are part of the sustainable development agenda which was agreed by 193 world leaders in September 2015 after a three-year negotiation process. And the principles at the center of this sustainable development agenda are that it's people-centered, Very good. it's interconnected, it's universal, it calls for integrated action that can be achieved best through partnering. So there's five principles, people-centered, yeah. interconnected, universal, calling for integrated action and partnering, are really at the center of how we are asked to focus on the sustainable development agenda. And then there are the 17 goals, which truly are covering every aspect of what matters for people and the planet. Now, nutrition, which is both a marker of sustainable development and at the same time a very important influence on the well-being and potential of the young person, especially as they get older. Nutrition is a really good example of an interconnected issue that actually is relevant to every one of the sustainable development goals. And the reason why nutrition is so important is that it matters to every single person in our world. That's currently about 7.6 billion people. Well nourished, they will perform to their best potential. Yes. Poorly nourished, they will not perform so well. And in today's world, there are nearly, well, nearly a billion children and young people and some adults who are affected by undernutrition and there are more than a billion who are affected by overnutrition. If you add it together, it's at least 2 billion out of the total 7.6 billion who are poorly nourished. I stress that we have to deal with both ends, the undernourished and the overnourished, because both of them are affected and suffer as a result of their nutrition problems. Uh, actually, for me, this really is the most important issue to cover right across the sustainable development agenda because without good nutrition humanity will not be well placed to deal with the challenges of the future. Oh, thank you so much and thank you for your leadership in bringing nutrition in sustainable goal, uh, development goal too mm. and also placing nutrition uh, along with food security and agriculture. This is remarkable. Well, I, don't, I can't take credit, Basantaji. Uh, I, I work with many others, but I did believe that nutrition ought to be there inside goal two. Yes. Because I think that it really is an issue that is relevant to health, agriculture, social and economic development, and human rights. And because it has that central role in between several different areas, the nutrition is there. Thank I'm you. So Thank glad you. it's there. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your profound humility. Uh -huh. uh, so much appreciative. You spoke about undernutrition and also over nutrition and yes. obesity. India has a double burden on malnutrition. Uh, um, in fact, uh, uh, as per National Family Health Survey, uh, the stunting uh, is almost 38 yes. percent and obesity and uh, overweight is almost 20 percent. And yes. in some cases, it, in some states, it's more than 20 yes. percent. Um, whenever there is a double burden on malnutrition, so people say that food system is broken. Um, so what are your messages for India? Well, I think something that I'll say to you now straight away is that I'm always a bit scared of saying that something is broken yeah. when it has been so brilliant for humanity. Right. If we look at the world these days, there is plenty of food available yes. for everybody, yes. with some to spare. Yes. If we look at today's world, everybody can access a, a healthy and nutritious diet if they can afford it. Right. If we look at today's world, 
we don't have major famines, no even though there are periods when, because of climate change or because of economic or political factors, including violent conflict, you actually do get communities that are really short of food. But we've set up in this world some amazing mechanisms to prevent some of the worst extremes. So I'm kind of not saying the food system is broken. Oh, but but I am saying that there are problems that need attention at the political level as well as at the technical level because if there's enough food for everybody, why isn't everybody getting it? And so that's why I, I believe that we need political and professional action to make sure that everybody gets the food they need to give them the nutrition they require to achieve their potential. Oh, very good. I think you are reiterating the principles of uh, universalization, principles of equity, principles of equality. Exactly. I think uh, that is more important for a country like India yeah. where there are multiple uh, deprivations. There are social exclusion, geographical exclusion, economic exclusion and policy exclusion. I think your message is very good. The second message is also very reassuring, uh, Dr. David, uh, that food system is not broken. There is a problem. I think that is a very, very reassuring message from a person like you. Thank you so much.